Hello everyone and welcome to Blink Productions, it's Nick again, um, this time we're going to be into the computer completely and no video this time. So what I actually want to talk about today is Adobe Media Encoder. So Media Encoder is what you use to export a video. Um, normally if you're exporting from After Effects or from Premiere, you'll go through Media Encoder. If you're using anything for the Creative Cloud, it's a good way to export all your videos. And I assume that if you're here, you, you know about Media Encoder and you're actually at the stage where you're in Media Encoder ready to export. So, the first thing you want to do is we're just going to delete all of these. These are the previous exports I've done. And this is a video that's not ready to go. Um, I have brought it in from my computer, but I haven't exported it. So just to explain a bit what's happening here, um, here you have the format and the preset. These is the encoding and the format um, and the output here, obviously. I mean, it says it here. Um, and then the status ready means it hasn't been exported. It'll say done if it's been exported. Um, so output file is probably what you want to change first. So you click on that and then just locate a place to export it. For here, in this case, I'm going to select the desktop and, and just export it straight to there. And to go into the most important part of this video is this part here. So you can click either one of these to change them. So for here, I'm going to click .h264 and either one, it's going to open this window here. And this is where the magic happens. So this is where your compression goes down, your quality goes down, uh, not down, sorry. Um, it's where you adjust it. Um, it all happens here. So there's a lot going on here. So let's just break it down one by one. So your source up here and your output, essentially you don't want to touch these. These are going to be fine if you're exporting out from Premiere or After Effects because these will be adjusted to your composition size. If you go down here, this is your timestamp. So obviously if you skip ahead a bit, you can see um, in the video, this is how far you're in the video. And here you have your start and end points. So you can change it like this, um, just if you want to change it in the video while you're exporting. I wouldn't suggest to do this and I suggest to actually change your start and end points during the video editing stage. So in After Effects, if you hit B and N, you can set a beginning and end point. And that way it'll clip in here equivalent to that in your After Effects composition. Same thing in Premiere Pro. This is what you're looking at here. It has nothing to do with the exporting or what's actually exporting. So now that that's done, we want to move over to here, your export settings. Generally, if you're doing a final delivery to a client or you're exporting to YouTube, Instagram, you want to use H.264. H.264 is the most widely accepted compression um, format so and it's going to be able to play on almost on essentially every single device that's out there so Macs Windows iPads iPhones everything should be able to accept H.264 now in your presets um, match source high bit rate is also what you want to use of course you can use high bit sorry medium bit rate or low bit rate if you want to um, if you want to get your file size down Say, for example, you're uploading to a website that has a limit, then you can bring down your bitrate a bit. So for this one, I'm going to select high bitrate. And down here in the output name, you want to click that, and that's going to change, again, the location of it. So you can change it here. I'm not going to change it because I like where it is at the moment. So you want to make sure these two boxes are checked to so make sure it exports both video and audio. So after that, you come down to here and there's a few tabs here. The tabs you want to look at um, is video and audio. Multiplexer, captions and publish, generally you don't want to worry about. You don't want to even touch them because you might stuff something up. The basic settings on there should be correct every time. And same with the effects tab. The only reason you would possibly use an effects tab is if, say, you're exporting from After Effects and you want to add a bit more gamma into the video, um, then you would hit Lumetri Look slash LUT and then apply a gamma filter on it. But for this time, we're not doing that. So let's just untick that and then go to video. 
Also, I just want to be clear that this video isn't high quality video. This is actually a really bad quality video. To be honest, I probably should have used something better so you could see the quality changes. But normally you actually won't see it in this preview anyway, so I guess that's probably all right. <clears throat> so back over here. So basic video settings, if you go to match source, this is exactly what you want because you want this to match this, of course. So none of this changes. If you're exporting through After Effects Premiere, which is what this video is for, you don't want to change this. You want to keep this as it is to match the composition in After Effects or Premiere. So frame rates, the progressive aspects, um, this will all be the same. This doesn't change. But for some reason, if you do want to change it, you can. You can untick match source um, and then untick these boxes here for whatever you want to change. Um, Field order, you normally won't be able to change this anyway. You can see here that it's grayed out progressive. You normally won't be able to change that anyway. You can change your frame rates. You can change your aspects. Generally, unless you're shooting with anamorphic lenses, you want to stick to square pixels. That's the main pixel that most cameras use unless you're using, again, like I said, any type of weird lenses. TV standards, always hit NTSC, not PAL. And then we'll scroll down a bit more. So bitrate is the amount of information um, per second of the video. And essentially the higher the bitrate, the better quality of the video. But anyway, um, what you want to do for the bitrate encoding is there's three options. CBR means that there's going to be no bitrate compression. So that means if you have a white screen, it's actually going to contain the same amount of information as something like this, which has lots of color and lots of different things going on. So the reason why you don't want to select this is because your file size normally will go through the roof. So to compress this, what you want to do is go to VBR one pass, which means it's going to go over the video once. And if you have those, those black frames, what it's going to realize is that those black frames are the same and it's going to compress them. So then that video file size will drop dramatically. For the target bit rate, you want to keep this above 15, I'd say. Um, it was lower this time because this is obviously a very crappy video. This is coming from my FPV goggles, so it's not the most, I think it's even, it's 480p or something, so it's not the most amazing video, but for YouTube, for most of the stuff you're exporting, you'll want to keep this above 15, 20, <clears throat> or above 25 if you want to keep this very high quality, you won't even notice in YouTube, that's a good, it's a good bit rate for YouTube. If you go two passes, it means it's going to go over it twice and look for more compression to do. Um, I probably wouldn't use this and I'd stick to the one pass so you don't get too much compression and you don't lose too much quality in your video. So let's hit one pass and then the rest of it is just, oops. So now if we go to the audio tab, um, you want to select AAC audio. That's again, the most widely accepted audio format. 48 Hertz is good. Stereo channel is good. Audio quality high. You want to make sure that's always on high and the bit rate is on the highest possible. Bit rate normally doesn't take too much space or doesn't increase the file size that much. Um, so it's a good idea to always have that high because good audio is more important than the good video. So now that that's all done, you don't want to touch any of these things. Um, you're pretty much ready to export. So if you go down to OK, you're back to here and this is where you can start your rendering. All you have to do is hit the play button up here. That's essentially it for exporting to YouTube, Instagram, any other platform or any other video for beginners. We're going to be going into a bit more depth for a future video. We're going to look at NTSC versus PAL, um, looking at different types of compression for um, keeping master files of different videos. Um, so this video is just for beginners and talking to people who are looking just to export those videos for YouTube, Instagram, or just a general video to play. So now that's done. Thanks for watching guys. This is Nick from Bling Productions and I'll see you guys next time.